Cantillo. Cantillo for Liberate, but Iarushi is there. Yerushi is there, Gray is there, Gray gets the shot off the shoulder of the American forward. Well, the crowd didn't like this call, but Belido was obviously obstructing Cantillo, and Cantillo went right through him and got the ball. Referee right on the spot said, that's legal, if you're obstructing him, he can go through you and get it. Although the crowd certainly didn't like it, especially when Bob Belido had played in Vancouver for so long. Gino Lettieri, native of Montreal, only Quebec player on this Canadian national team. Most of the players coming from Ontario and British Columbia. Jerry Gray with the throw in for Branco Segoda. This is Mark Lippert losing it to Gray. And Cantillo goes down heavily. And Referee not hesitating, calling the foul. Free kick to the American. High heel to take it. Oh, dangerous ball there. Bruce Miller safely back to Tino Lettier. 15 minutes now remaining to play in the opening half. Canada leading 1-0. Oh, John McGrain with a safety first move. No time to fool around with him. Tino Lettieri indicating to his captain, Robert Iarushi, that he doesn't like that sloppy play in that area. Well, it really wasn't a very good ball from Robert Iarushi to McGrain. He gave the ball to McGrain with his back to the play, and McGrain tried to turn and lost the ball. Uh, in your own box, so just outside the box, you can't afford that luxury. Now, Belito going way back to Lettieri. The throw out to Bob Lenaduzzi for Bruce Miller too far. Wingo Cantillo for the United States. Di Bernardo. Di Bernardo on a give and go too far. Bruce Miller. Canada perhaps now going into a bit of a defensive shell which could be a bad move. They were doing so well coming forward. Di Bernardo. Ricky Davis by Bob Lenaduzzi. Back to Iarushi. Mark Antonio. Mark Antonio switching the attack, looking for Franco Segoda. Franco Segoda showing few effects as that Laren Judd who kept him out of the Canadian lineup a week ago. Ooh, that was a bit of luck for the United States team. United States claimed that they kept it in, and Canada hoped they had because Segoda was clean through. Jerry Gray going into Segoda. Segoda trying to find Mark Antonio. The Americans come up with it. Wingo Cantillo for Mark Liberich. Liberich. Cantillo back to Liberich. Attempted the pass back, but it didn't work. Lettieri. Not very big is Lettieri, but very, very quick. West McLeod at midfield. Stoyanovich. Good ball for Bruce Miller on the right side. Miller can't control it against Mikowski. He loses it. High key now for Steve Petcher. Petcher trying to find Davis on the right side. We've got 12 minutes remaining to play in the opening half here at Empire Stadium. Canada leading the United States 1-0. minutes and 38 seconds unofficially remaining to play in the first half here at Empire Stadium. Canada leading the United States 1-0 and a goal by Robert Iarushi. John McGrain picking off that pass. Plays it open for Bob Belito on the right side. Belito tries to get by Mark Leverage and Leverage just plain obstructed Belito. Just Threw his body in the way, he couldn't get around. Well, Liverage isn't the bravest 
the players. Uh, he went over the top of the ball a couple of times for Lauderdale. And here we see Chickens out again, takes the easy way out and just throws himself in front of Belida. Back to the live action. Quick goal kick taken by the Americans. Band off. In the middle for Diego Pesa. Pesa plays it to DiBernardo, but Wes McLeod is there. Sojanovic tries to get to that ball. Americans coming forward now. This is Mikowski, the fullback. Overlapping through the middle. Oof. Ricky Davis going down heavily against uh, Wes McLeod. McLeod comes up with it. Plays it forward to Bruce Miller. Lanaduzzi making a run on the left side of Miller. He doesn't see him or doesn't like the pass to him. Miller tries the shot off the American defenders and then it's played back to Artie Mauser. Gantillo. The bend off intercepted by Marc Antonio. Soyanovic has it. Plays it to the left side for Miller. Here's the shot. Oh, right through the block. There wasn't a white shirt there to knock it home. And the three Canadian strikers standing back in the penalty spot for the arm in the air, but why were they standing back there instead of following in towards the goal? They should have read it a little better and followed into the danger area instead of standing back and watching. But a great chance for Canada, and it's gone. Mikowski plays it on the right side for Ricky Davis. Ever dangerous Davis. Good speed, good move. Working against Lanarduzzi. And the ball goes off the end line. Goal kick for Canada. Nine minutes and 21 seconds remaining to play in the opening half. Canada leading the United States 1-0. This is Canada's third game in the opening round of World Cup qualifying. They'll play their final game two weeks Sunday in Azteca Stadium in Mexico City against the Mexicans. Canada played to a one-all tie in Mexico in Toronto's Exhibition Stadium two weeks ago. Jerry Gray flicks it on, looking for it to go to. Bandoff comes up with it for the United States. Flicks it forward for Davis. Davis shoved ahead there by Leonard Uzi. But a battle going on between those two. Di Bernardo. Little sloppy, little careless. Leonard Uzi there. Keeps it in play. Wes McLeod. Back in the middle for Jerry McGray. Jerry Gray for Stoyanovich. Back to Gray. Petcher is there, and Petcher gets it back to Arnie Mauser. Dangerous moments there for the Americans. Well, good aggression by both players there. Petcher and Stoyanovich were determined to win the ball. It went one way, went the other way. And this game's exciting. Everybody wants to win the ball. The, the pace of it is, is tremendous, and that characterized the whole game. Neither player would give up on that ball, although it kept going from one to the other, and eventually Petcher was able to put it back to Mauser. Throw in for Canada, deep inside the American zone. Jerry Gray with Bob Belico. Belico for Stoyanovich. Stoyanovich watches it go into touch. Another throw in for Canada. They're getting deeper and deeper inside the American zone. And this is where if you had somebody who could really come up with that long throw in, you could almost reach the far post. But Canada doesn't have anybody of that caliber, so... Gray for Stoyanovich. Stoyanovich got a shot over his shoulder. Didn't work. Americans clear into touch. These kind of diagonal balls from defense to a striker running wide are pretty useless on this turf with the wind behind them. Uh, second half, maybe with the wind against them, it might hold up a bit. But right now, as you can see, that ball's just gone. And for a front runner to try and catch it is virtually impossible. Missing that ball. McGrain just watches it go into touch. Six minutes and 37 seconds now remaining in the opening half. Canada continues to lead 1-0 as McGrain goes back to Levieri. Levieri off the head of Sakota. Gray forward for Stoyanovich. Good ball. Stoyanovich tries to get by Ty Keo in the middle for Bruce Miller. Miller leaves it for Jake. No! No! Oh, they missed the goal. They, they haven't to given it. They haven't given it. It hit the bar twice, but it did not, I do not think, cross the line. What a wicked shot by Jerry Gray. The crowd do not like that one. Well, I tell you what. This is heads-up play by Gray right from the start. Stoyanovich gets the ball across, and another heads-up play as 
the ball's allowed to run to Gray. He hits it. Now, just look at it. Hits the inside of the post. Does it go across? The reason I said it go was that the linesman immediately went to the center of the field. He did not put his flag up, but he did run to the center of the field, and I assumed he'd given a goal. But the referee, once again, right on the spot, and that's about as near as you can come to, <laughs> to scoring without actually getting a goal. Just a tremendous shot. Reminiscent, I think, of 1966, Wembley, England, in the World Cup final when they had a shot like that go off the crossbar. Close call for the Americans. A little bit of disappointment there for Canada, but they continue to lead 1-0. Five minutes and three seconds remaining to play in the opening half. Palaiso. Di Bernardo for the Americans now. Bandoff. Bandoff working against Gray. Bandoff still coming forward. Yarushi. And it goes off the leg of Bandoff. Well, we, we ball out again, and, and you try and be the judge. We see the ball being allowed to run to Gray. Here it comes. Now you be the judge. We follow the flight of the ball. Hits the inside of the post. Bounces on the line. Hey, I don't know. <laughs> it's getting pretty dark out there, as you can see. Well, it's all academic now because the referee did not allow the goal. He's not about to change his mind. Bob Belaito coming forward for Canada. Belaito looking for Segoda. Carmen Marcantonio. Leaves it for West McLeod. West McLeod loses it. This is Ricky Davis coming forward for the Americans. Davis, nice move to get by Yarushi. He's got three red shirts with him. Mark Antonio there to intercept. Leonard Uzi now just knocks it over into touch. Well, once again, we see how dangerous the Americans can be, but give credit to the Canadian defense. We've got five white shirts back there in a hurry to quit to, to cover. coming through. It is getting darker. Heavy clouds rolling in. Perhaps we're in for some more rain. It's not unusual at this time of the year. Beautiful BC. Throw into the box. There's McGrain off his head. Penal it's very dangerous and he keeps it out. Well, once again, we saw John McGrain being a little too clever trying to control the ball in, in his box and he gave it straight back to the American striker. In that area, you can't afford to be pretty. You can't afford to be nice. Just get it out of there and settle down. 
just a little too casual, I feel. That's the one area where Tino Lettieri could be weakest, and that is uh, going after high ball because he isn't that tall. He doesn't have the advantage that Bowser does. Throw in to the Americans inside the Canadian zone. Aikio, Kio into the middle. Yarushi is there. Stojanovic tries to beat Petra to the ball. Gary Gray, what a strong game he's played for Canada. Gray for Bruce Miller. Myrna has people in front. Pagoda! Oh, a beautiful opportunity there. And Pagoda just couldn't get enough foot on the ball. Canada's certainly taken the game to the United States. Just a terrific breakaway. Great play here by Gray. Pushes it forward. And if Franco Segura had got a call from Stojanovic, Stojanovic has just got to try to put it in. But enthusiasm maybe on the part of young Branko Segura. He saw an open goal, dive for it, whereas Mike Saranovic was running on with a perfect opportunity. And there goes the whistle from the referee, Molina Mendez, to end the first half of play here at Empire Stadium. And the fans loving every minute of it simply because Canada will have a 2-0 lead going into the dressing room. And there you see Branko Segura, who has one of the Canadian goals. That's coming on a penalty kick. Well, we said that Canada had to take the game to the United States. They certainly did. They showed more aggression, more creativity in midfield, and there's certainly good value for the 2 nothing lead. It'll be interesting to see if the Americans make any uh, substitutions and lineup changes for the second half because their backs are certainly to the wall right now. So the score at halftime here at Empire Stadium, Canada leading the United States 2-0 on goals by Iarushi and Branko Segoda. I think it's the Rangers have injury problems. Ulf Nilsson fractured his wrist in a game last Sunday. You're only a lot of people are involved in putting together a World Cup soccer team, and this year for Canada is certainly no exception. Canadian Soccer Association, the North American Soccer League, and of course Labatt. Jay Paul is down at field level, but a man who's been around soccer for a long, long time. Two nothing Canada at halftime here at Empire Stadium in Vancouver. John McMahon, a halftime result like that, you don't even mind the race. You know, I can stand here all day. <laughs> your thoughts about the first half? Well, the first half was entirely different from the Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we were decided we're definitely going to go at them, and you can see we're doing just that. We slightly changed the plan. And we're looking, if you watch closely, you'll see that most of the time, we are one-touching it as much as we can. By doing this, you've got the Americans running, chasing the ball. And, of course, the more they run and chase the ball, the tired that they're going to get. And at the present time, you can see that they're dying right now. Now, that doesn't mean they won't come back strong in the second half, because they are a strong team. What about your second-half strategy? Second-half strategy, well, I was just speaking to Barry as he left to go to the dressing room, and I would think we'll continue to go the way we go, and the reason for that is simply this. The more goals we score, the better it is later on. Should we win today, and it looks like we're going to win, we will have four points, and the worst it could happen to us would be a tie with the other two teams. So the more goals we get, we could go in on a goal difference, like Mexico squeezed in the last time, and now we could be in the driver's seat, and this is what we're looking for. Okay, John, we wish you the best of luck in the second half. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's go back up to Steve. Well, Graham Leggett, it's nice to see uh, John McMahon smiling for once. He hasn't done a lot of smiling. He certainly wasn't smiling after Canada played to a 1-1 tie with Mexico and then a scoreless tie with the United States last week. No, he wasn't, and I think he may be a little premature saying that they're going to win this game. Uh, there's still 45 minutes to go, and anything can happen in soccer, but uh, he's smiling, and he deserves to be. The Canadian team's done very well. The first goal for Canada came in the 23rd minute, and I thought it was a combination of two things. Heads-up play by Iarushi and a mistake by Arnie Mouth. And it was an excellent cross by Gray. He gets it right to the far post, and Iarushi had come up specially for this. Mazda starts to come, then he changes his mind, goes down, and Iarushi just nods it into the corner. But you can see Mazda starting to come up, and he must be saying, why on earth did I go and then stop? If you go, you've got to go all the way. You don't stop. Well, that gave Canada a 1-0 lead, and there was a near miss, a goal that uh, perhaps will be argued about for some time to come. Well, you'll be the judge. <laughs> I mean, we've seen it two, three times, and I, I think it went in. The referee thought it didn't. It was good play by Gray, who gets it forward to Sayanovic, and then good shouting by the Canadian team. One player started to take it. He let it run to Gray. Gray runs on and hits it. It curls viciously, hits the inside of the far post, bounces on the line, hits the other post, and goes out. But obviously, the ball had not crossed over the line, and it has to go totally over the line before it can. But, you know, 
they've been given before and they would have been an excellent two-goal lead for Canada. But they came back later on, got one on a penalty kick, and they're, they're smiling right now. I was just going to say that. A few minutes later, it looked to us as if perhaps the referee decided that maybe that was a goal. So he awarded a, a penalty kick. Although I think uh, the violation was indeed a violation inside the box. Well, it was a violation inside the box, but the Gota didn't argue about it. He just picked the spot, blasted it, and I guessed the wrong thing. And that's what you've got to do in a penalty spot. Give credit to Segoda, he's a young kid, he didn't wilt under the pressure, picked his spot, blasted it home. 2 nothing for Canada, things look pretty good. Well, that's the situation right now here at Empire Stadium. Canada is indeed leading the United States 2 nothing. We'll be back with the second half in just a moment. In Canada, leading the United States 2 nothing. A pair of goals in the first half, one from Robert Iarucci and the other from Branko Segoda on a penalty shot. Canada has made one substitution, Graham Brash, you can tell us about it. Well, Mike Sweeney has been brought on for uh, Bob Lifelaw, and Bob looks as if he was struggling with his hamstring in the latter stages of the first half, and uh, obviously he couldn't continue, so Bobby Leonard Doozy's moved to right back, and young Mike Sweeney's come in as left fullback. In case you've joined us late, uh, Gino Strenicher, who has been a standout for Canada in the series so far at midfield, was taken off the field on a stretcher in the first half, and uh, first reports indicate a broken right arm. But Carmen Marcantonio came on to replace Strenicher and has done a, an outstanding job for Canada so far. Canada leads 2-0. We've got 43 minutes and 14 seconds remaining to play in the game. The Americans coming forward now. Ricky Davis for Steve Pecker, the overlapping fullback. Here's the cross about to come, but Stoyanovich got back and made the defensive play, and the linesman awarding a goal kick. Steve Pecker not at all pleased with that decision. He was convinced he had a corner kick there, and I think I have to agree with him, but the linesman being a little bit uh, kind to Canada on that decision. Gino Lettieri has been the starting goalkeeper for Canada in the three games to date. Goes off the head of Fletcher. He couldn't control it at all in the touch. So Canada will wind up with a throw in deep inside the American zone. That's Wes McLeod coming over to take it. Wes, who plays his professional soccer with the Tampa Bay Rowdy, DC native. Ringo Canfield for Di Bernardo. Mike Sweeney intercepting for Canada. Iarushi. Long ball looking for the head of Stoyanovich, the target man. Pecker comes up with it for the United States. Rolls it back to Mauser. Mauser throws it out to the left side. Greg Mikowski for Bandoff. Bandoff runs onto it well, but Jerry Gray was there to knock it across the end line. That'll be a corner kick for the United States. An enthusiastic crowd, they're making lots of noise, and uh, obviously they're delighted with the 2-0 lead that Canada enjoys at the moment. And Barry Clark said it was so important to get that uh, vocal support from the Canadian fans here at Empire Stadium. He was hoping for a large crowd. I think he'll be rather pleased with the crowd and the Canadian performance today. Corner kick going to the far post. Lettieri coming well off the line. Missed the point. Bit lucky an American forward wasn't there to drive that in. As we said, that's uh, the one weakness that Lettieri might have, and that's his lack of height when he comes off the line to punch his balls away. Bruce Miller challenging in the air. Ball goes into touch. Throw in to Canada just inside the American zone. We've got 40 minutes and 56 seconds remaining to play in the game. Canada leads 2-0. Should Canada win this game this afternoon, they'll have four points in the standing. The Americans won, the Mexicans won, but the U.S. have two games to play, and the Mexicans too. John McGrain tried to play it forward. Wes McLeod comes up with it for Mike Sweeney, number 16 for Canada. For Stoyanovich. Stoyanovich tries to give and go back to Sweeney, but it fails. Ricky Davis for the Americans, off the head of Carmen Marcantonio. Sweeney. Flips it forward, looking for Bruce Miller, but Ty Keogh comes up and allows it to roll to Arnie Mauser. Sandoff. Keogh. Keogh. Long ball to Di Bernardo. Wes McLeod wins the battle in the air. McLeod. Sagoda. Sagoda tried to get turned around, couldn't. 
McLeod again. Liberich. DiBernardo. DiBernardo, watched by McLeod, slips it forward for Ricky Davis. The other she there. Bruce Miller. DiBernardo. Americans in control. Catcher. Long ball. Jerry Gray, safety first, knocking it into Scott. It'll be a throw in for the Americans. Now the United States teams obviously have read the scouting reports on Tino Lettieri because they persist in hitting this high ball into the middle, but Lettieri came off the line there, decided not to go, and uh, that could have been dead. Lenaduzzi with a bad header there. Instead of heading it downfield or back into touch, he headed it across the line, and that'll be a corner kick. For the Americans, Mark Liberty, number 11, going over to take it. They've got Diego Pesa by the near post. With Terry coming well out to punch it off the line. Bend off. Back out on the left side. Pagoda's there, the clock in the middle, flick forward, and it's wide. Diego Pesa getting ahead on it, but couldn't control it. Barry Clark with his ever-present tape recorder. He's not talking to himself, but really uh, making a few notes on a tape recorder that uh, he'll play back for himself after the game is all over. He's having a secretary sit on the bench. <laughs> well, Barry's looking a little concerned, and uh, maybe he should be, because the impetus is certainly swung in the United States favor right now. Stoyanovich coming forward, tackled there by Petrus. again the other team with jerry gray gray to carmen marcantonio marcantonio good ball on the right side for bruce miller miller brings it back into the middle miller looking for jerry gray perhaps to run onto that but he didn't just a little mixed up in communications there uh, he used to go as a decoy hoping that that uh, gray would keep running and gray had stopped but uh, Canada have got to keep taking the game, I feel, to the United States. If they get one more goal, the game's over. If they keep lying back, and as they did in the first game against Mexico, and let the opposition team come to them, uh, they may well give up a goal, and if it gets to 2-1, then anything can happen. So they've got to keep playing the way they did in the first half. To go down. Di Bernardo, Mark Antonio, West McLeod, in control for Ken at midfield. Bruce Miller. Miller couldn't get to it. Ricky Davis comes up with it. Davis playing the ball, hoping that DiBernardo could run onto it, and then Yarushi back to Lepierre. That's the first time that DiBernardo has been in the box this afternoon. He's been playing a very defensive role in midfield, and he looks as if he's really struggling. And for Lauderdale, he was perhaps the best player, taking people on, winning situations, but today he doesn't look as if he wants to play. Throw into the United States, Ricky Davis. Makowski, Makowski with space in front of him, tries to find Diego Peza, Ibernardo, Americans in control, Ibernardo, back into the middle, Makowski was there, Mark Antonio just turns and fires downfield looking for Stoyanov. Vandoff against Gray, Gray winning that battle, Vandoff couldn't stay on his feet. Gray losing it to Bandoff.